Okay. Some citrine drama <laughs> has been taking place. And yes, I did say citrine drama. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to have myself a margarita for this one. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let me take a sip here and let's get started on the citrine drama. Okay, so um, there is a YouTube video that came out uh, fairly recently and um, uh, me and the YouTube user discussed back and forth a little bit, a uh, very nice person. Um, we decided to agree to disagree on some points and um, because I'm known for making videos on crystals a lot of people PM me, email me, message me on Facebook regarding the situation with citrine and um, I even wrote an article about it. I had it fleshed out already um, but I added a lot more points in there specifically on citrine since this one was being discussed so much and a lot of you probably know exactly what I'm referring to um, and I put the article up on Facebook, but I think I'm, I'm going to add it as a Google Doc so anybody who wants to can download it and I will put the link to the article down below. Okay, so here I have various types of mostly citrine. So I want to talk to you about that. Now let me preface this by saying as I preface most of the things that I say, just about everything unless it's some kind of scientific um, theory, there is no scientific fact because we're always changing um, as we learn more. And um, as I do with what I believe, or actually let me say, let me rephrase that, I no longer say I believe, I now say I feel because just as in science, as I learn new things, I have to revise what my thoughts were before. And by saying that I believe something kind of locks me into it and makes me buy into it subconsciously even and since much of what we manifest and what we co-create is based on our quote-unquote be beliefs um, on things of these matters I really try to say I feel because as I learn more and I'm learning so much right now at an exponential rate just because of you know the shift that we're going through I think mostly and and researching that I've been doing but um, as I learn new things, I go, oh yeah, yeah, let me revise that, what I thought about such and such, and um, so now I feel this way. So I try to say I feel, you know, because it's something that resonates with me. All right, so let's get back on topic, citrine. All right, so most of you are probably familiar with looking at citrine and purchasing citrine that looks like this. And some of you, I guess, were unaware a lot of us were unaware that this is heated citrine, lab heated citrine. And most of the citrine that's on the market is of this type because it's very difficult to get natural citrine in, in the raw state natural citrine that hasn't been heated in any way. It, it's hard to get it. And um, so even I, in the beginning, was under the impression that this golden citrine was not heated, but in fact it is. And when you buy tumbled citrine, I would say 99% sure that it's heated, even if it's a light color like this. And some people um, mistakenly thought or were told that if there's white in it or if there's rainbows in it or if it's a lemon color that it's natural, that does not necessarily mean it's natural. Um, and the reason I know that tumbles, tumblies are mostly 99% heated citrine, lab heated. I should say lab heated because all citrine is created because it's heated by the earth. Mother earth actually heats it and that's how citrine is created. So lab heating it, okay, um, is actually um, too expensive to take natural citrine and tumble it like this. They're not going to do it very, I can't imagine someone doing it. So all tumbled citrine, and I happen to know for pretty much fact, is mostly, um, it's pretty much all lab heated. Okay, and I just realized while I was talking about that, I never finished my thought at the beginning of saying, whenever I say something on these videos, I try to preface it by saying, if 
anything here does not ring true for you, then it's not going to resonate with you. And if using heated, lab heated citrine, even the Madeira, has been working wonderfully well for you, as it does for me, then you continue to do it. Why fix it if it ain't broke? If it's working for you, then you continue to do it. No matter what someone says, what I say, what someone else says, what someone writes in a book, if it's not resonating with you, then it's not going to work for you. Okay, so first and foremost, you go with your intuition. You go with your gut. And that's what, you're, that's what you should go along with. Okay, so back to the citrine. This is a gemstone of citrine. And I know you probably can't see it too well here. I have pictures of it on my Etsy shop, which is on hiatus right now, so that doesn't help us much. But anyhow, um, and a lot of people have difficult time telling difference between this and yellow topaz. Um, the only way to really truly know is to check the Mohs hardness because it will be different. Um, so this lemony color doesn't necessarily mean, or the light color, doesn't necessarily mean that it's natural, that it's not lab heated. Um, this is pretty easy to tell the gemstone because it has a tinge of orange to it. Even this golden tint citrine has that orange in it. Natural citrine will not have any orange in it at all. Even this tumbly, the white, in fact the white is pretty much a tip off that it is in fact lab heated. Now, let me also say that lab heated citrine starts off as either amethyst or smoky quartz. There seems to be, um, some people say it's mostly so smoky quartz, some say it's mostly amethyst. It doesn't really matter. It's usually one or the other. And then they heat it. And they can get this really deep, dark Madeira citrine this way. Not to say that Madeira citrine does not occur naturally. It just doesn't usually have, it does. It does occur naturally in the earth. Um, and as I said, Mother Earth heats amethyst, usually amethyst, also smoky quartz, and makes natural citrine, which I'll show you in a second. So it's the same process, whether it's done in a lab or it's done by the Mother Earth. Now, when we heat in the lab, and it, it cannot be heated in someone's oven, someone asked me if they could do it themselves in their oven. No, they can't because it's like 900 degrees Fahrenheit and above what they heat in the lab. Um, to create the citrine. When they do that though, the heating does not molecularly change the citrine. So it's still silicone dioxide, just as all quartz is silicone dioxide. What gives citrine its color is the iron in it. Okay, there's iron um, impurities um, in, the, in the quartz itself and that's what gives it its color. All right, and citrine comes from a Latin word citron which actually means lemon so it should be this lemony color right here okay so we've talked about lab heated citrine now let me show you and this is probably gonna be two parts okay now let me show you natural citrine this is natural okay let me hold it up to the light all right it's got a honey color or a white wine color and when it's very light, that lemony color. This is a really nice piece right here, actually. Um, nice big chunky one. And natural citrine is usually, um, comes in these barnacle-like or library looking type of um, formations because that's just the way it grows because of the iron impurities in it. It actually makes the quartz form a little bit differently, the silicone dioxide. Here's another one, broken off of the matrix. Okay, can you see that color? Probably better here. All right, so this is what your natural citrine is going to look like. It is much more rare. It's harder to come by. I just noticed there's an amazing rainbow in this one. And that's another thing. Not all citrine has rainbows. Someone also asked me if you know it's citrine because it has rainbows. No, um, some citrine does, some doesn't. The rainbows really have nothing to do with it. Um, rainbows are there because of sheets that grow within the quartz um, itself, within the quartz lattice, and creates rainbows. And it can happen in lots of different types of quartz, not just citrine. And it's not a hallmark of natural citrine. This one has a lot of these barnacles on it as well. That is a characteristic of natural citrine. Notice how 
the lab heated citrine often will be um, in those pointy chips that are coming off of usually an amethyst matrix or an amethyst um, druzy or it's um, this kind of a druzy cluster. Okay, you're not going to find this color in this formation, usually. Okay, now, here's something interesting. Okay, this is also a natural citrine. Very dark, right? And this is smoky quartz. Doesn't it look the same? Hmm, okay. Now, if somebody sent me this all by itself and told me what is this, I'd probably tell you smoky quartz. But I happen to know it is just a very dark natural citrine and the reason I know is number one, it came with the others. Number two, they were all brushed with a fine dusting of iron like a tangerine quartz often is. And because of that, that iron clue tells me that this is a natural citrine because smoky quartz is actually created by Mother Earth through irradiation. Mm, irradiation is a type of heat, but it changes the quartz on a molecular level. You'll actually find aluminum in a lot of smoky quartz. So now, just to get off topic for a second, if you talk to me about aqua aura or any of the aura quartzes, I will say that no, they don't retain the healing properties because to me, I feel since they've been irradiated that they're molecularly changed, their healing properties are probably, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd go as far as saying non-existent, but very different. And since it wasn't created on a molecular level by Mother Earth, then it's not something I'm going to use for healing. Okay, these are smoky quartz tumbles. Look at how light this one is. Oh, now wouldn't you say that that could be a citrine? Well, it's a little bit less yellow, but it looks a lot like these. So a lot of times when you go to a dealer, they're going to use color to determine what stone it is. You know, and even though this is a natural citrine, like I said, if you just showed this to someone, um, someone who knows about rocks and stuff without doing um, analysis on it, spectral analysis on it and finding out exactly what elements are in here and if you did not see that iron dusting on there that I already cleaned off then how are they going to know that this is a natural citrine? Okay, so because of that reason and okay, now let me go back here and say that I do believe that lab heated citrine does have healing properties and very significant ones at that. Okay, and I can use this stone for my third chakra, for my solar plexus chakra or chakra as I've been taught to say recently. Um, because, first of all, I've used it before. And